Go ahead. Microphone number okay. two. Um, I have never had a straight answer from VHA since my parents were seven months in complex care on the Jubilee campus in 2001. In my lifetime, since my grandparents were in a nursing home, I had not seen, other than Glengarry, Glenmore, Sandringham, etc., which were built by 1965, all you've done is re revamp those facilities, those single floor facilities for wheelchairs or complex care and all these new names. Extended care is when they're frail. Ms. Brown, you have a question? My question is, and I went to the meeting two years ago, the waiting list is still there and the city has grown. Where are the new 500 acute care or extended care beds that we have needed since my parents were seven months in the holding tank in 10 years? All you're doing right now is revamping the existing beds, and I'm not seeing any new facilities. So are we going to have two more facilities okay, for I, I 500 get, beds? I understand the question. Thanks very much. Microphone number one. Uh, a couple things. First, is, that's the exact point, is that why would we give up Oak Bay Lodge instead of put this facility somewhere else where we're actually going to add beds? We're only adding a few beds if we tear that down and build this new one. We are short of beds now. We will be short of beds when this project is done. If we really care about the greater good of the community, we'll keep Oak Bay Lodge and put this somewhere else. Very interestingly to me, we, once, we just heard one more time, if they don't get their way tonight, then they're going to go build somewhere else where they don't need a variance, and they're going to build the beds, which means I guess they can get financing, and there's another site they have in mind where they don't need a variance. That would mean that's another 320 beds. Remember, the, the facility here doesn't mean people from Oak Bay get to go into it. So if we put an extra 320 beds for our seniors somewhere close by in this community, that means now we have that 320 plus the ones we now have at, at Oak Bay Lodge. That's for the greater good. Um, for seven years, I was in charge of the pyramid of, um, uh, excuse me, in charge of procurement uh, for RFPs for federal grants for uh, low income housing. And I know we dealt with a lot of nonprofits, and in every case, the nonprofit not only submitted an audit, but they also had to submit their business plan so we could understand what the um, application actually entailed, and I'm kind of surprised that that isn't the case. And also, Mr. Waldner at a formal meeting had said that he didn't have a scope of work or the amount of money needed to retrofit the lodge, and now I'm hearing that actually the engineers have gone through and written a report, and the architect has said that we're doubling the parking, but we're asked, they're actually asking for variance for much less parking, so I'm confused on that. And also, the model is to scale. That's it. Thank you. Uh, sorry, microphone number one. This is Dr. Molna. 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 Sorry. Yeah. So I don't get my three minutes, but I'll try to ram it into one. Okay. It's about due diligence. Has there been a fire safety study by an independent group? If we're going to make a due diligent decision here, what do we know about the fire safety of the defendant place system? Is the site accessible? I notice you can't access one side with a fire truck. How do you come in on the other side? Uh, I understand there are five firemen at the Oak Bay uh, Fire Department. You've got 320 people. How do you move them? How many people are on at night? Where do you move them to? Issues concerning, this is why I'm concerned about one minute. Uh, communication, how do you get communication when you're moving 320 people? Half of the fire department is in there trying to get in to find the site of the fire. The other half are trying to fight it. The arrival crew, search and rescue, has to wait for the uh, rescue uh, crew behind before they can go in. That's 10 minutes waiting. Uh, within Victoria, there could be 35 fire, uh, fire, uh, men, or fire people, fire persons show up to fight it. So where's the independent study? Uh, who are we listening to? Uh, who's going to answer the questions about a very, very complex fire situation in a tower where you have to fight it internally through baffle doors that are supposed to be blocking air, keeping air pressure separate so they become a refuge center? Question to, uh, to
to be raised, like where is it? And then the qu other question is where's the liability study on how do you, uh, and you also have dementia patients in a locked confined area there. People on medication, people uh, that are confused, maybe they're going the wrong way on the smoke, uh, where's the liability there? Power of attorney, can you sign somebody over into that, con that place? What's the long term uh, cost to the, district, uh, to the municipality if, if that's rushed without due diligence? And that's, that I, I feel really constrained here within this one minute. That's not even a three minute question. Okay. Good, thank you. Uh, My name is Jean Lamort. I'm a resident at Oak Bay Lodge. And I have a, a number of questions very quickly. One, if it takes two and a half years to build a replacement, which I hope to go into, uh, how long will it take to demolish the present building? And so the total amount of time involved. And I would like to say this. Because I am a resident, I'm aware that our electrical system needs to be fixed, replaced, plumbing as well, and other things. Now, to do that sort of work, and to now bring it up to the present codes is going to be very expensive. So if you're comparing the cost of building a new edifice and tearing down the garden and replacing things in the old one, there's no comparison. Tear it down, build something new, and get it to be doing the job that can be done at this time in 2011, 12, 13, 14, how long it takes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Bob. Microphone number one. I will be brief. I know everyone's tired. I take major exception to the fact that we were told by, I'm sorry, Howard, that we were informed of this massive project. I live in the backyard of the Colonel Bay Lodge. I heard about this project, quote, six weeks to two months ago. This is enormous enormous. At that time, I ran around my little petition trying to do something to stop it. I had like two months to do it. So I really take exception to being told that this has been in the works for the last two years, let alone there's been community consultation about this massive project. This is an incorrect statement, and I really take exception to it. Thank you very much. Fire Department, and I would just like to speak a minute on that. Uh, the manning of the uh, OPA Fire Department uh, relies heavily on mutual aid, and to the best of my knowledge, there's no possible way they can manage a, a building of such size without uh, mutual aid from other outlying districts. And none of that has been discussed whatsoever. I contacted the Victoria Fire Department just to verify that before I came to this meeting. Uh, one, other, uh, one other thing I'd like to ask is, uh, all those residents that are in Bay Lodge right now that will be moved to other facilities, they now will be situated in another facility, and will they be the first ones back to the new facility, or will they now be situated somewhere else and it's first on the list coming, so none of them will be coming back? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my Hello. I'm Jane Van Zipline of Vancouver Bay Road. Um, I just wanted to comment on um, how uh, you said about that you looked at the took care of the traffic on Cranwell. You didn't when you didn't on Hadley Bay Road. I uh, I've been living there all of my 37 years, and I I sometimes can't get out of my driveway. There are so many cars coming backwards and forwards, uh, north and south. I almost lost my husband and my son in an accident three years ago on Father's Day. Someone was careening down the hill. They fortunately smashed into the Mercedes, my na neighbor's Mercedes, sent a catapult, they catapulted it 60 feet down the road into a telephone pole. Then they careened across the road through my neighbor's yard, took down a fence and hit another house. That was the second accident like that within, within six months, actually. There is an absolutely enormous amount of traffic. And how does putting the entrance and the exit on Capper Bay help that situation. It's already so busy. It takes way too long to get out. Um, also, I believe three weeks ago, Dave Marshall said that that wasn't the best plan. Is that not, that's where customers here in 
I, I don't think engineering was that happy no, with, so that, that, with that suggestion. I think that's a fair comment. About it. it was not very good. It would always get congested. So I have huge concerns about the traffic there. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Next microphone, Ms. Burnett. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council. My question is directed at VHAW. November 16, 2009, a press release from VHA issues an RFP for the Oak Bay Lodge and Mount Tommy Hospital redevelopment. At that time, they were, they were soliciting proposals for, to build 325 to 400 beds, publicly funded new beds. They offered up some pieces of real estate to accomplish that. What we have before us now is not 325 beds to 400 publicly funded. I think B. Hawk can uh, tell us that that number, in fact, has grown to well over 500 beds. I suggest, I request, that you consider relocating this building to a more suitable and economic site to build on. This one certainly is quite expensive. That would be an additional 320 beds to the existing 280 beds at Oak Bay, not to mention the other beds that will be in abeyance because those properties are not being released at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pratt. Uh, Mr. Pratt, a uh, couple questions. Is, um, are we going to be guaranteed that this site will stay at, if that site goes through, that we'll be, uh, it will stay at 320 beds throughout the uh, life of life of the uh, building? Will it go to 420, will it go to 540? Do we have a guarantee of the municipality? This is for the Oak Bay staff. Has Oak Bay done their own parking study? Has Oak Bay done their own traffic study? Has Oak Bay done their own environmental study? Has Oak Bay done a credit check on the uh, Baptist Society? <laughs> Are they gonna go broke? We got a building in foreclosure for the Baptist Church in Sydney. Have we done any due diligence, due diligence there? Has Oak Bay uh, done their own shadow study? Has, has, um, I'd like to know if the Baptist Society and Oak Bay, have they, track, have they talked to BC Transit? Have they been involved in talking to BC Transit? One more question, and that's it. Thanks, sir. So I have a few questions. Um, today, Howard Johnson presented some uh, facts from what he's been going through with this. Where is the proof from the lawyers of the, like where are the documents of proof about this 3P deal? I'd like to see some proof. Um, where is the proof from the lender that everything is A-OK? -okay? I'd like some physical paper. And if this has been happening since 2009, why did you come to us, the neighbors, and be transparent about this project? If we hadn't gotten involved, would you have consulted us, BHA? Thanks, Ruth. My turn uh, Again, uh, as you know, uh, I live at Boga, just behind the lodge, and we've had a traffic issue there for a long time. Uh, it's dangerous getting in our driveway. I did note in one little statement there that the parking uh, was Staff is going to be allowed to park on site, I suppose, to the current practice of VHA of uh, paid parking, and that which explains why we have so many cars in the neighborhood. However, it seems that, uh, I'm not sure I heard properly, but it seems that the 107 spots was going to accommodate uh, the staff in the, in the facility, in the hospital, because this is what it is, is a hospital. But there was a comment that uh, the residents of the hospital, uh, of course, are uh, unable to drive and therefore don't need parking. But I did get the impression that um, there's no one going to be coming to see them. There'll be no cars, uh, no one driving a car to come and see the, uh, the residents. And that there's therefore no need for visitor parking in per se, that uh, no real numbers are required. And nothing's been justified in that area. So I would like to know. Has the parking been thoroughly investigated? And again, uh, I'm going to emphasize this. Has the municipality independently taken any studies on traffic, traffic circulation, congestion, uh, the Boker, uh, Cabo Bay intersection? How can I say it? It sucks, guys. No one's been killed yet. It's been a miracle. This is just going to add to it. Thanks, sir. All right. 
Question one, following on the several questions about yeah. objectivity, I have for counsel. Um, is it correct or is it um, appropriate even for to rely on information in this major decision that the applicant themselves provides? Isn't there usually some need to get objective counsel, uh, pardon the pun, uh, to make the decision? Um, question two, who will operate the kiosk? This relates to a point that I wanted to make before about the increased number of staffing required for such a hospital building and where they will go to go to the bank and etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's not really a great location. They will probably cut through Oak Bay High School, etc. Need to think about that. Question three, <clears throat> Again, we need some uh, uh, questions uh, or counsel to be aware of the impact on police and other emergency services, etc. for this, which I have not seen documentation yet for. Question four, has the lender been approached for an extension? Yes. Question five. Okay, that's just about your minute. I'll take question five. No, no, no. That's fine. No, 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 make question five. Uh, is this the best model, an institutional model, proposed by VHA, which seems to be a, a bed uh, cost per unit, and I would uh, be concerned at the loss of independent housing at the site. It is a different site than B Street. It has different um, uh, surroundings and such than B Street. It would be a loss, I think, as independent housing seems to be the one way that Oak Bay residents can get in to the facility. Thank you. Mic one number one. Uh, again, Paul Murner from uh, 1882 Hampshire Road. Um, I guess we're all getting a little ragged tonight. This seems to me like a uh, process by attrition. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I guess I'm quite concerned about the, 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 the democratic process issue here. I, I, uh, I, I have you know statements that uh, eight different people, uh, six of whom are from uh, South Oak Bay, not even you know, from the neighborhood, uh, wished me to uh, to deliver in, uh, in opposition to uh, uh, this proposal. Uh, it seems to me that we've been through an election, and quite clearly, uh, people have, uh, have spoken uh, at least favoring uh, uh, against the uh, uh, proposal. And, and here we are at the eleventh hour, on the defense of ordinary citizens of of, of Oak Bay on the defense of uh, uh, trying to fight back this, um, in my view, unacceptable proposal. I, I guess I really just uh, object to the whole situation. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, Don I said 2051 Hampshire. Uh, my question is directed to you, Your Worship. As the director of the CRD, were you part of the health, the CRD health, that voted on the $40 million package for that. I was. You were. And Some I have of a legal opinion. No, no. There was no conflict. It seems odd that there wouldn't be that somebody has a relative in Oak Bay Lodge and that becomes a conflict. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess, I'm not a legal guy, obviously, but it just seems odd to me. Well, <laughs> 40, for $40 million that you, you allotted to uh, both the VHA and Baptist Housing, and now you're able to vote on a variance in relation to a building that you've given approval to through $40 million worth of funding. And, 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 I, and I understand you have a you have a legal opinion on that, and I'm sure our, our new mayor would certainly understand it better than I, but boy, from the bottom end, it sure looks kind of, yeah. you got two and, things and, going on there. And, and it's, it's one of those things, that, you know, I'll, I'll reply to it, but it's one okay. of those things you have to deal with when you are a director on the CID and capital regional housing. And for instance, Sanch is, is voting on Harrow Woods. That was actually approved at CRD. Now it has to go to zoning. Mount View was actually rezoned in Mount View. It started off with the capital original housing, then is voted on by Sanch. So obviously, we have to have an opinion on that, a legal opinion. And the legal opinion says that you're not in conflict. Now this is one step removed from that because this is not a rezoning, as I've constantly pointed out. Oh, this is actually a variant. So I'm, I've actually double-checked it and triple-checked it, so I'm fine. Okay, well, I, I guess I, I was thought you might have disqualified yourself from the original $40 million funding initiative, knowing that if, and if, if, if you were presented with that six-story model way back at the funding time, you thought, this is probably going to be an issue for my, uh, for my constituents who 
within range of that building. And I will probably be facing a variance here that I'm going to have to bid on. Maybe I should pull away from that 40. Now, whether that would have changed the you know, 40 million, neither here nor there, it's history. But anyway, oh, oh, thank you to answer my question. 40 million, but I'm clear. Oh, I'm okay. clear. So, Jane, you've already. Uh, is actually maybe a question, and that is, is council aware of any other proposition that is achievable within a five-year span that could come forward if this proposal is declined tonight? I am not yet in need of that facility. If we delay, I think I will be. Okay, uh, Jane. Okay, I. And as the gentleman may find me. Yep, you haven't yeah. spoken. Yeah, sure. Uh, Byron McAllister, 2258 Capro Bay Road, right at the entrance. Um, a lot of people have been talking tonight from Cranmore. I've gained an entrance, so Councillor Herbert, you're, you know, a couple of feet here or there on the change of it. I'm just trying to put a face to that. Uh, my five-year-old and two-and-a-half-year-old enjoy their front yard right now. I don't need another two stories. $80 million project, I think they could have built a better model at the back there. Sorry, it, it's not to scale. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Boga. It's a question to VHA regarding operational funding. Does VHA actually have the operational funding to operate Oak Bay Lodge? alongside a brand new 320 bed, or would they be forced to close over the large because they don't have enough funding to run both? Okay, that's a question. Now, two people standing there uh, for a proxy. For a, I just proxy. want to go on the record with the municipality that uh, I, have a, I have seven proxies here that were given three minutes, and I just want that to go on the record that we were shut down before the questions. And these people haven't had a chance to have their concerns brought forward to the council. Thank you. Thank you. And have I, I think you've spoken twice. I know. But we're allowed one minute for each question. No, you're not a one minute. And I'm just going to ask you to sit down because I just need to have a quick consultation with the council. And it uh, depends on what they decide. Give me a direct question. Okay, great. 
Here's my question. Uh, we speak about the greater good, and I've heard in past meetings that I've been at, um, several people speak about greater good. So here's my question, my direct question, which is this, is how much are the, are the individual councils, it's not a rhetorical question. I bought a house well over a million dollars based on an understanding of the bylaws and Oak Bay Lodge being four stories. That will change my property value. I understand that you're going to say or suggest that perhaps it's for the greater good. My question is how much are you willing personally to contribute to my loss towards that greater good? Are you expecting me to take it and my neighbors to take it all on ourselves? So it's not a rhetorical question. I'd like to know exactly for the greater good how much you are willing to contribute. Thank you. Okay, so that's not a question to Vihar and, no, and not. Spavit, it's, it's, it's to members of council. Correct. Okay. With respect, with respect, Mr. Mayor, my question will be answered. Yes, yes. yes. We're now going to stay here and answer these questions. So, um, any more points? Answers. Answers. Thank you, sir. Okay, would uh, the team start to uh, come up and start answering these questions? And he, he's left, just the, uh, the microphone guy. He, only temporarily. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to attempt to answer the questions in order, uh, but I've written them down, and if I, if I miss something, I think uh, Howard's going to uh, try that. There was a, a question at the beginning about, um, with respect to the RFP, the RFP called for uh, new beds to be built, and there was a question about where are these new beds. These are new beds, 580 new uh, beds is the total project size now. The vast majority of which are capable of providing care for complex care patients, and the balance are in places to dementia housing. Uh, so, so those 580 are Mount View and Oak Lodge? Yes, it's okay. a sum of 260, uh, which is a full build out of the six story Mount View site. I think seven, seven, seven stories at Mount View, six um, stories at Oak Lodge, and 320 beds. But those are largely replacement beds, and the reason we're replacing uh, 40 something year old beds and, and older beds is because they no longer meet the needs of the people who are leaving the hospital. They, do, they, they basically don't meet any modern standards. They wouldn't pass a licensing inspection if it was to be imposed uh, under the adult care regulations. And we need to work our way methodically through our building stock and bring those beds up to a place where they provide safe, quality care. Um, I can confirm that BBA has a full business plan uh, with full capital operating pro formas. Uh, we have a full proposal, we have a full design set, and we have provided those to both the Ministry of Health, the Treasury Board staff, Office of the Controller General, and Office of the Auditor General. And other than saying that, I don't know how many other people we can involve in the review of those documents, but it, it has been extensively reviewed by the, the prevention system. Okay. Um, can I, can I take you back to the question about if the if the beds are not replaced in you know, bay and, and it goes somewhere else, a project goes somewhere else because you need the size, what happens to the Oak Bay beds? Is so, the funding still in place to operate those beds? VIA has operating funding for long-term care beds and that funding goes up basically at the direction of the province of British Columbia, the Ministry of Health. In order for us to build new beds, we have to uh, basically replace an existing, new as in brand new, as not, I mean, to build a uh, facility, we have to use the operating funding from existing facilities if and until the province gives us additional operating for that, and they have not done so. So that's what the, the last question that came up, is there is not any more money that we have to provide a new building and keep Oak Bay Lodge. If Oak Bay Lodge, in order to build a new building, would have to be closed. Okay. Uh, fire safety study, again, uh, we rely on professional engineers at uh, Baptist Housing. They rely, and I'm sure, I'm sure city staff will confirm the same thing, professional engineers do these studies, they attest to these studies, they're professionally liable, liable for these studies. We had similar studies done by the proponent on the patient care center, which is a 500 bed, eight story acute care, tertiary acute care facility, and we have a fight fire in place system in that facility, it's fully sprinklered, non-combustible, they're, they're actually much safer building than the, the Oak Bay Lodge as it sits. So if I'd be worried about fire safety, I'd be worried about having a fire in Oak Bay Lodge right now as opposed to a modern, non-combustible um, hospital type facility. Have those studies been done and are they available to us? I, I, would, I would defer that uh, 
the answer of what they will to the component, but yes. Um, what is the amount of time for the project? I believe Patrick's going to cover that. And uh, I covered the RFP. Um, similarly, with there's a question around documentation and, and agreement from the lenders. Again, as part of the business plan we, and part of the RFP proposal process, we ask for a full credit check, full uh, bank statements from all the proponent parties of the of the consortium. We have all that information. We had professional advisors look at the information, including major accounting houses, and we're satisfied that all that documentation ex obviously exists. We have it, and it's with the office, of the auditor general, and controller general as I speak. Um, is this the best model? We believe, and in fact, I think, um, if, if this proposal goes forward, that this project represents the, the pinnacle, the best um, elder-friendly, long-term care design uh, that exists in the province. This is absolutely the best model for complex care patients, which are the ones that are currently sitting as ALC patients in hospitals all around the province, all around the country. Those people are waiting in the hospital because they can't be placed into a, an appropriate facility. And that, in fact, is one of the reasons why we have backups in emergency departments right now, because we can't blow those people through. This is absolutely a critical piece of the system, which goes up into the community and out to acute care. And it's a shortage of these types of beds that are the issue uh, in terms of our access and flow. Um, there's a question for council, but I know the proposal will leave you that. And then the operational facility. Oh, and then the question regarding if there was to be an additional facility with the Baptist housing, the Baptist Housing Society be interested. Frankly, that's not their call. We follow fair business practice as required by the province. If there was a new opportunity on a new site, we would be obliged um, under uh, fair business to actually post that publicly and seek the best proposal for that particular opportunity. This one uh, is, is the subject of a previous RFP and we need to follow the contractual procurement law around that. Please go ahead. Um, just getting back to the letter that you read out from Mr. Walter, um, in there it says that um, if this variance application received from Baptist Housing um, just is not approved, then there is a real risk that the project will fail as a result of our inability to meet the conditions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You say that there's a real risk. Is that a five percent risk, a ten percent risk, a fifty percent risk? If if we don't uh, achieve uh, successful variants tonight. I believe the probability is in the high 90s. Um, we've got the regional hospital district's funding that is based on this proposal. We have the, the private lenders who are based on placing the money um, for the balance of the funds. And we have, um, frankly, we need to replace 320 aging beds, including the ones at Oak Bay Lodge. And we've been working very, very hard to replace them in the community. But we do need to replace them with a new facility, and we, we can't uh, afford to wait um, potentially for a whole new RFP process, which could take another seven years. So, okay, so I just wish then that you had, your letter had been stronger, or Mr. Walter's letter had been stronger. If, if that letter had come out and said, if this does not get approved tonight, we are taking these beds out of Oak Bay, that would have helped me make my mind up. It doesn't say that, it says there's a risk. I don't know if that's a 5% risk, a 10% risk, or a 50% risk. It also says that the project partner may be required to look at another municipality. Well, may is another one of those words that, you know, I just wish it had been so much more direct so that it helps us. <laughs> and obviously, uh, obviously you can't speak to your boss. That would probably work. Well, I would imagine the board either. I mean, I would imagine it's a board decision. So it's, board decision. It's, in, it's impossible for you to make that decision, right? No, it, no. It, in fairness, that's, that's, a, that's a board decision, not a staff decision. Am I right? That's a, that's a board direction. That's not a staff direction. And, and, and I... Yeah, and I, I should actually just share that the board um, in contingency planning has asked us to look at other sites. So we're... In, in, in due diligence in respect of where this decision goes, which is your, obviously your decision, not ours, but we have to do our job and, and, and get these beds and these, and these patients into a more appropriate environment as soon as possible. Okay, um, Mr. Cotton. Okay, 
I'm going to uh, address, um, first of all, the uh, discussions that we had with your fire department. So to the best of our understanding um, and discussions with fire, that, that yes, this, uh, this project would require uh, mutual aid from adjacent municipalities, but that's uh, something that they're accustomed to on, on most uh, larger buildings. Um, we did go through with them a fairly comprehensive uh, plan of how they would access and stage the site, and that's why at their request, though we're closing down the access on the Cranmore, they required that that be an emergency access only bollarded and locked connection, because when they have mutual aid and they're bringing in, uh, and the way that they stage all of the support, um, they've gone through that plan and they need to be able to have egress off the site in that location. Um, they were supportive of the additional um, exit point onto Pedro Bay Road because it did provide additional staging opportunities for them as well. Um, it is standard practice in the course of making a building permit application that we have a fire and life safety engineer on the project. They advise us through the design process not only on how to construct the building, how to fire rate it, how to sprinkler and, uh, and control it, but we also include for broadcast communications within the building that there is electronic enunciating at the door to the fire department satisfaction so that when they arrive on the site, they know full well the protocols for establishing where uh, the response point needs to be within the building. So all of these things are vetted through a very comprehensive process, uh, most often done and submitted for staff review during the building permit process. And it is our intention and the building code requirement that we retain uh, fire and life safety engineers as part of our team. Um, the uh, question about the timing of the demolition and construction, uh, there is a one year notification period. During that period, we already have made application for stage demolition. So working with VHA's transition plan, it may be possible to close down certain remote portions of the building and begin a partial demolition uh, during that one year period, but the full construction could not happen until that one year period uh, had terminated. So one full year, which would include demolition, and then 24 to 26 months of construction. So the total project timeline is roughly three years. With respect to the questions on parking, um, if there was some confusion around the parking numbers, um, I'll just try to elaborate here. Uh, the traffic study and the parking demand study that we have submitted to staff and has been made public did consider a combination of resident, visitor, and staff parking. There were studies done of the, uh, of the existing site on a Wednesday peak period, which is the peak staff period, and a Sunday peak period, which is the peak visitor period. Those numbers were blended together, and uh, the findings determined that at a peak requirement, there was a requirement for 76 parking spaces during the Sunday peak and 81 spaces during the Wednesday staff peak time. The existing site accommodates 68 spaces. So you can see why there is demand on on-street parking. Our site proposes 107. So even with the increase of 15% in the number of beds and the correlated increase in staff, uh, the 107 will be more than adequate to cover off the need as has been measured and has been reported in the parking study. Um, and then finally, uh, with respect to the model, my apologies for the quality of the model. I did it myself. Um, but that is not to say that it's not accurate. Um, we had an in-house team produce that model. It typically takes four to six weeks to have a professional model shop do a, um, a, a, a model. At any one point during this process, we honestly believe we were one week or two weeks away from a council decision, and uh, because we have, uh, in hindsight, been deferred many times, yes, we have had time to build that model, but at any point during our process, uh, we believe that there was insufficient time. At the last referral to last Monday's meeting, we made a decision to use the available two and a half week period. Couldn't uh, contract out that work. We brought in some additional staff and did that within our office. I personally took out a scale and I have measured, uh, and to the best of our ability, 
and uh, using an appropriate scale, which is a 1 to uh, 260 metric scale, uh, that model has been produced as, uh, as an effort to try to convey on top of the digital model that we've done and reconstructed three or four times, run video clips, cut sections through, we've done mock-ups. Every time we've been asked to produce a different way of representing the project, we have attempted to do that and to do that within the available time frame. And this is, again, an indication of what was possible within the time frame allotted. Um, but I do believe that it is an accurate, fair representation of what the uh, proposed building massing will be. Uh, so those are my comments, um, and I'll pass it to Howard. Okay, I'll try to answer these in the order that I, I think I heard in the remaining questions. Uh, 320 bed, 20 beds, is there a guarantee that there won't be more on the site? The answer is there cannot be more because it would violate the regulations in terms of the amount of square footage per, per resident, both in terms of the bedroom sizes, so in other words, the bedroom sizes have not been built to double size that would have a future ability to increase capacity, and there would also be, uh, they would not, we would not have the square footage in terms of the common space either. So there's there's no way it could be more than 320 beds. Cafe, who would operate it? Uh, this is not intended to be operated as a commercial cafe. We intend to operate it ourselves. Lender extension? No, it's not an option unless the project is moving forward. That's the answer I've got. And I can't indicate that it's going forward unless I have a variance. Um, I think those were the three, unless there's, according to the notes of anyone else that I missed anything. Members of Council, have any questions that were not covered? Councillor Hood? Uh, I believe at the moment there are 206 FTEs operating in the building. That's in the letter got from uh, Mr. Mr. Walner. Um, there's, Basically, the building that you're proposing to build is not very different from what exists now. It's just, it's 40 beds more. And because, and because the beds are single, single rooms, it's higher. But the operation is virtually about the same. How many staff are you going to take to operate the new building? Um, I'm sorry, I do not have that right at my fingertips. But uh, we did provide that information when they, they looked at the parking study in terms of uh, information as to how many staff would be coming on to a three, they considered it being a 320 bed care facility and took that into consideration in terms of the parking needs. And I, I realized there is, I don't know that Patrick touched on the basis, the parking study did include the aspect of visitors. No, my, so, my question but, really I know was, question is, my is, question is really, if it takes you 206 staff to operate this building, that's presumably on three shifts, you're building a new building, which you say is more efficient because of its design. Yes. It's only going up minimal number of beds. It's going up 40 beds. It, uh, is it going to take you, can you operate at 206? Is it going to be a lot more? How many is it going to be? Is it going to be? Uh, I you don't know the answer. I don't, that's a very factual question. I'm sorry, I do not have that right at my fingertip. In terms of that. The answer is you don't have it at your fingertips, but maybe you can confirm that um, one of the things that happened several years ago was that the parking uh, went from being on-site free parking to when VIHA took it over, uh, it was paid parking. Everyone moved off the site. We had to chase people around the neighborhood. I read in your proposal that it's, that it's, it's going to be all complimentary on-site. Right. Is that, is that? And, and that's why I say, if the issue is parking. No, my question is, sorry, is that in some kind of agreement that when we're all dead and gone, that will still be there? That agreement? 60 years. Is, uh, that, is, that is our intention. Okay. As long as we operate it, that uh, it would be not paid parking. That's correct. Okay. So, but to answer John's question, maybe, I don't know if he's fully, if it's looking at, the number of staff in relationship to parking or not, because in, in our central care home, for example, we know that less than 30% of parking is needed. This is, this is looking at 30% in terms of inclusion of parking allowed. And we know that that is a very standard number one to three 
that's used by municipalities from a, a zoning perspective for parking. It was really just a general question okay. in that the building, sure the building's higher, but it's going to accommodate basically the same people you have there plus 40. So it's not a much bigger operation than what I'm saying is, if it's that much more efficient, can you do it with both the same staff or is it going to go up down? Uh, here's what the parking study said. The anticipated increase in staffing at the facility is expected to be less than 15% increase in the number of care beds. The number of beds is going from 280 to 320. That's a 15% increase in the number of beds. When the traffic consultant did his analysis, he, he said that the requirement for staffing uh, the number, and that's the number we don't have at our fingertips, was less than that. So it's it's less than a 15% increase in the number of staff. I think the answer is you don't know, and that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody's working. Okay, Mr. Van der Brook, you wanted to get in on this? I, no, no, I don't want to get on parking. <laughs> <laughs> there was a question that I have written down that I don't know has been answered, so I was just going to address it. There was a question about whether the residents that were moved during the construction phase would have to um, sort of re-queue up or whether they would be, be coming back. They'd all be coming back, I think, for that. So people who need to be moved for the purpose of demolition construction would be moved back into the new facility. Okay, do we have all the council name? Mr. Johnson. The uh, transportation study that looked at site access as well as parking demand for residential care. Uh, what it didn't look at, as I understand that study, is the kind of congestion that would uh, uh, appear down at Cabra Bay and Bunker Creek or Bunker Road, um, Bunker Cabra Bay, that corner, which has been a very troubling intersection for us in Oak Bay. Are you aware of where I'm referring to? I, I, I know where you're referring to. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have to defer to uh, Patrick, okay. who had the direct relationship with the, uh, the parking study consultant. Okay, then I'll ask that. So what my question was is, was there anything around the transportation um, assessment that examined the nature of the increased traffic flow on that particular corner, which is already a troubling corner. And uh, and the other thing I'm just going to throw out here, we have dealt with this, we have tried as a municipality to deal with this uh, corner for a, a long time and really haven't come up with any remedies, mostly because they're too costly. So one of the things I, I'd ask is, um, we haven't asked an awful lot of you in terms of returning back to the community, in my view. And I'm just wondering if you would be open to making some kind of contribution around um, addressing that complicated uh, intersection. Um, if you were asking me, would I be willing to contribute to the cost of further traffic studies and, and looking at the, the nature of it, that, that's an easy answer. That's it. It's an easy yes. If you're asking, me to fix something, I'm not sure what that means, to be honest with you, and what contribution. My sources of, of contributions are where I have money, I have to turn and pass on to be it in the project. Okay, so, so the first, okay, I appreciate does that. that. Yeah, no, yeah, that's right. So the first question I'd like to have, you were going to ask, answer about, was the, did the assessment address that particular corner in terms of increased congestions and complications? Uh, unfortunately, it didn't uh, isolate um, all of the surrounding intersections. We do have a summary statement that, um, that looked at the, the volume on surrounding streets. And, uh, what about that? You don't require those streets. Mr. Scott, could you just repeat what you said? The estimate was that the additional volume created by the larger facility would result in 15 vehicles per hour during a weekday afternoon peak traffic period which they equate to one additional vehicle every four minutes on the area road system. Now, I don't have a, a detailed breakout of that, but certainly working with staff, if there was additional uh, terms of reference established for 
looking at specific intersections or breaking out that information, um, we could certainly do that. Is that part of the traffic study? That, that is part of the traffic study that was submitted. Um, but it is also part of the, the process. This, again, uh, is a variance um, permit process. We have not gone through um, the detailed uh, development application yet, and that would be normally something that we would be engaged with your staff. They would then look at the more detailed uh, proposal, and we would work with uh, engineering to look at some of these requirements. So it would not be unusual that we'd be asked to broaden the terms of reference um, that in that later part of our application process. Anyone else have any uh, questions? Please come forward. Hello, my name is Jackie. Close time. Yes. <laughs> my name is Jacqueline Rubal, and I'm a new resident to Obey. And my question is... Could you just give us an indication where you live? On Ashdown. Ashdown, okay. Yeah, you came to my house. <laughs> um, <laughs> what you've heard tonight... Sorry, I forgot you. <laughs> my goodness. You know what you've heard tonight here, and the opinions of the concerned citizens here in Obey, and I don't live near the complex, can Obey Council, in good conscience, after what you've heard, and it appears to me that you lack a lot of information and you're only getting answers tonight for the first time, can you, in good conscience, pass this variance at this stage of the game? My name is Rosanne Whitten, and I'm a Excuse me. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I was writing the question down. I don't Sorry. think you came to my house either when I moved in. My name's Kathleen Matthews. I didn't, right? No, I didn't. Ah. <laughs> my name's Kathleen Matthews, and I live in South Oak Bay, so I am learning about this basically as of tonight. I honestly, you know, I, I feel that the group of men that are here, they've probably done due vigilance, due vigilance, whatever the word is, within the confines of their the constraints of what they've been able to do. They feel they haven't been able to share anything with us. But the reality of this is, is that this is a hugely disruptive uh, project that I can't see is going to benefit anybody that's living there now should be in survive the transfer in order to come back. I can't see that's going to benefit anybody in the community when by the time I get to be there, I'm now 64, I don't, I mean, I, there's no guarantee I'm going to, it's not for Oak Bay. We're talking about something for the whole region. And it's going to cause a huge amount of disruption in our own community, and they're not paying any taxes. So I can't see, from what I've heard tonight, apart from that, that I respect, that you've done your homework, you've done everything you're required to do, it's going to be a good solid project. But I can't for the life of me see why it's going to benefit Obey in any regard to have that here. I just, I, it doesn't make any sense because it's not for Obey. It's just, Anyway, I don't really have anything more to say, but I just can't see, please tell me, I don't see anything in that list of benefits you read that really pertains to Oak Bay. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, yeah, my name is Roseanne Witten, and I live at 25 Monday Volker. And my concern is similar to what you just heard in that it strikes me as a lot of conversation here tonight around confusion. I'm not connecting the dots. There's a lot of miscommunication. There's total disconnects in, in information, even for some of the questions that you've asked yourself. And clearly, the neighborhood has a lot of questions that have not been answered. So I heard that Treasury Board and OCG and Auditor General and Ministry of Finance, we have all been given copies of the business plan. How can you make a decision on something that you have not even the business plan on? How can you do that? That is fundamental <coughs> to anything, and you are in the hot seat. So, as my sister said, you're in a very difficult position, and uh, I don't know how you can make a decision like that in good conscience. So, there you go. Microphone number one. I'll be very brief again. I'm at the corner. Uh, thank you, Tara, for addressing that corner. My utmost respect. I'm the lady at the corner of Boker and Cadbury Bay, which is a nightmare at any given time of the day. And I have a file of complaints about the corner, but once again, when we were addressed about that horrible corner, again tonight, everyone skirted around it, and I, again, 
there were no answers. It will be dealt with if this variance goes through. Well, I'm sorry, I will be put in the back burner if this thing is allowed. Nothing will be done with that horrible NASCAR corner, as we all call it, before somebody is killed. And, and the amount of traffic that goes with this building is just going to add much more chaos to that terrible corner. Thank you very much. My phone number two. Uh, my name is Robin Williams, and I live at 1752 Road. And um, I have a few questions um, for Viha. How many 60 year contracts do you enter into? Is that a standard length of contract? It seems like a really long one. Um, what's the expected life of the new building? Um, what are the penalties for either party if they wish to step away during 60 years? It just seems it's probably going to be millions, billions, billions of dollars exchanging hands if uh, it all goes south in 10 years. And um, the council, how does this process compare to the Open Beach Hotel approval process? It seems that the projects are kind of maybe similar in scope. So, uh, in size and with the, they probably have a similar need for um, public input. And um, I am opposed to this. Catherine Grant, 2274 Cranmore Road. I'm speaking for myself now rather than my neighbor. Um, thank you to the gentleman from the Hot and Baptist Housing for letting me know um, why Hilda wasn't consulted. It was a business decision that you couldn't uh, you know, let the cat out of the bag as far as how the development was going. Uh, two points I want to make. Um, I, I'm questioning the legality of the model back there. I believe, was it at the uh, Municipal Hall on display? If it's not to scale and if it's not a true model of the project, I think there's a legal issue here as far as what you've been representing to the community in the past few days. So I find it very disconcerting to hear with a project of that scale and uh, dollar-wise that they had to make up a model and you're not even an architect or landscape architect or anything like that. It's a misrepresentation. Mr. Carter, you, you are an architect. Yeah. Okay. Just, 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 that was, I just corrected it because oh, yes. I don't want that for the record. But when someone's an architect. If, if it is, I understand that. But he admitted that he wasn't sure if it was to, you know, stay. No. I think, I think, I think we'll clarify that. Well, we'd like to, we'd like to clarify and we'd sure. like to know where, I've never seen a six story tree. It's, back there because some of the trees are actually six stories high. From what I understand, you don't have any on that site and you can't really bring them in and grow them that way. So that's one question. And the other question that I had was, if maybe I'm not connecting the dots because it's getting late, but I'm wondering when uh, the gentleman from Baptist Housing says that if we're not getting the funding tonight, if we're not closing up this variance by the end of tonight, and if we can't get things in place by <coughs> December, we're not going to have this money that's been put aside and promised. So we'll have to go elsewhere to look and do this project somewhere else. But I'm wondering, well then, where are you going to get the money if you don't have the money by the end of December? Where are you going to come up with the money to go and do it somewhere else if you're going to lose it if you don't get the variance tonight? So that's just something I wanted to ask you. Okay, thanks very much. My point number two. Yeah, I haven't heard about the fire safety study. I hear that the building at uh, Jubilee Hospital is built and it's a very modern building and I understand that. And I understand this building will be well built. Question is, does it uh, fit into a very constrained site? Uh, is the infrastructure there in terms of uh, fire response with five people in the fire department here? Uh, how is that integrated with the fire response from the other uh, fire departments? Where is the fire chief here? Uh, why, is the, why is the development team answering these questions? Uh, where is the Victoria Fire Department? Uh, these are questions that need to be answered and they have to do with safety. You've got 320 people. Uh, you've got a number of them in a locked area. You've got limited people coming in to deal with it. And I just would like to know with professionals and, and, and biased people, you know, what are the risks and uh, how, how are they being addressed? Particularly given the constrained area of the site, 
can't access it from one site. Windows may not open. They may be plexiglass. I'm not sure how you built them. Uh, you know, if the fire is at one end, you only have one access point. How's that going to look? I, I just have all kinds of questions around that. Okay. Thanks so much. Microphone number one. I, I, I'm going to say something for the first time tonight here. Um, I, my name is Andrew. I live on Cranmore Road as well. But that shouldn't really matter where I live because I'm part of Oak Bay. So my concern here is the model that was presented tonight. I'm not actually necessarily opposed to this project that's going in. But the model there is, it doesn't give a very accurate description of what the building is going to look like. And for me, I feel like it was such an unprecedented building that's going in, such a great project that's coming in. Why is there a model like that there? You, have, you say that you have funding until December 31st, and you say it take four weeks to build a new model. Why don't you get a new model built within the next four weeks and show it to us again? So that's my question. Okay, thanks so much. My question, Andrew. <laughs> my problem number two. Uh, my name is Paul Brownett. Uh, I live on Christie Way. You've also been visiting me uh, when I got here four years ago. Thank you very much. So you owe me, you owe me a visit. I'm one busy guy, right? <laughs> Howard uh, Johnson and Vian also been visiting me. Uh, I live behind <laughs> Hilda. Uh, I live behind Hilda, and uh, I'll, it'll be within direct uh, vision of my front window. Um, I guess one of the questions, I mean, there are a million questions you guys haven't had answered tonight, so I can't possibly see how you can possibly imagine making a rational adult decision on this. Really, I can't. And we're, we have a gun held for our head, folks. This is kind of a, a very weird and, I, a, a, frankly, quite manipulative process. All kinds of manipulation is being brought to bear on us here. And I think one of the issues I'd like to have stricken up is how many people did Baptist Housing look to for financing? Because we've heard of one deal, which is a fantastic deal, he says, for 25 years, which is fantastic. If it's so fantastic, won't, it be, won't there be other lenders willing to, to uh, pony up the cash later on? So is it the case, uh, Mr. Johnson, that you have, in fact, consulted 500 lenders and 499 of them have said no way, but the 500 have said, yes, I'm, I have a fantastic deal for you? Because it seems to me you've got this one pretty sweet deal, and I'm not really sure why the deal wouldn't be equally sweet eight months from now, or why there wouldn't be another lender in five months from now. And you haven't given us any information about this mysterious pension fund lender and how many other people you've talked to. Gracious, that sounds a little bit like the occupation of Wall Street. <laughs> I'm going to hammer you guys again about the bad numbers. Because it's all about people, not beds. Okay? This community wants these people here. And we want it in a facility that is tolerable in size and scope to the landscape that makes Oak Bay so great. My question to you, Rudy, is currently we have another Baptist housing facility that has been built to standard in Sydney, which has lost its contractor and is now up for foreclosure. 80 beds ready to go with lifts. I understand that's not this Baptist housing. And excuse me, being not a Baptist, doesn't matter what kind of Baptist housing organization you come from, you're all Baptist housing people. So my question to you is, if we've got people in acute care hospital beds right now waiting for placement, and BHA has the ability, and I know they have the ability, to place people in facilities on a temporary basis, placement. Why are not we are we not utilizing those eighty beds at that brand new facility in Sydney? Thank you. Thanks. Um, my, a, a couple of the fourteen years or so I spent in post secondary education were to get a graduate degree in science. And one of the things that when you do any study, if you talk about who funds it, and you get understandable third party, you get them understandable gathering evidence to make a decision. One of the most profoundly disturbing things for me over these past meetings is how little council knows about this. How many times council has deferred to the applicant to answer questions. I'm counting on you to represent me and to do due diligence to make a decision 
based on all the required information to decide whether or not to give this variance. So much of that information which is required to make a good decision on behalf of your citizenry, you can't answer. You have no idea. I don't believe it's because you, you're negligent or you failed to do due diligence or that you don't care about the process. I believe it's all based on the fact that we've had this ultimatum and you have not been given time to do due diligence. But the fact remains that you can't even answer the questions. Never mind the people in the room who are the citizens of Obey. You have been privy to more information than all of us, and you can't answer the questions. So again, to, to, to mirror what other people have asked you, how can you in good conscience, or in good ethics, ha have the amount of information, or claim to have the amount of information required to make a fair decision today? That's on Cranmore, that's on Hampshire, that's on Canterbury, 
minutes on Boker, so there will be one extra vehicle every four and a half minutes at each time. Is that correct? It seems like an awful lot of extra vehicles. I'll, I'll get the question and answer for you. Okay. We have time to divided by 60. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rankin? Yeah, just one quick question is, how can you do a traffic study if you don't know how many employees are going to be there? It doesn't make sense to me. And uh, I'd like to thank Council and all the staff who really worked hard on this. Thank you. Thanks, I get the sense that we want to... No, but I, I'm not going to cut it off. Okay. Um, I have a question on the funding because I had a family, close family friend for five years in a brand new complex care built in Ladysmith, which was built by a private individual. I don't know how the funding was done, but it was for subsidized income as well. Um, and so why, aren't there, why isn't this government looking for other sources of funding? Pension plans are very common for this. If we're not supplying more money for more beds, we're only replacing existing beds and we've known we've had this shortage for a very long time. They're responsible for finding that funding. Um, and I can invest in London Life and pay for my mother's care if I want to make money off her hide while she's still alive. Um, so why are, you, why are you finding other sources of funding? Um, the other thing is, I learned on Thursday in my update on my license, and the whole day was on long-term care and end-of-life care that in 2007, in all the existing facilities, including the one up on where our friend was for the last five years, that they have cut the RN staffing down to a minimum at night, bare bones. They figure if they're asleep, there's no problem. So if you're gonna have a fire emergency at night, who's there to rally the, rally the troops and get the people up and running? Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Andre. Any other questions, comments? I think I'm hammering away at the numbers here. I think people in the in the uh, facility here should know that the Obey Lodge, as it stands right now, has 280 beds. 280. Currently, that is the largest facility on Vancouver Island, and from the data I could collect from Northern. Health Authority, Interior Health, Vancouver Coastal, and Fraser. That is the single largest facility offering the type of care in one location. There is no other building in this province that holds more than 240 complex care beds. And we are now asking for 320. Excuse me, but that reminds me of something a cynical neighbor said to me. Are we now into warehousing seniors? Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to, sorry. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? <coughs> Seeing no one wanting else wanting to address council. I'm going to ask the uh, applicants team. Uh, there will be no more questions then. Okay, absolutely clear. There's no one else who wants to approach us. So we're going to ask the applicants team then to please answer as many questions out of those last series that you can. And I'm also going to ask our staff to answer a couple of questions on fire service, mutual aid, mutual aid to the university, that kind of, of issue. So please go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, to point out in terms of the, um, the site that was referenced in Sydney, um, it has nothing to do with Baptist Housing. Baptist Housing is our society name. Um, it is, uh, was built by a Baptist church, um, but we had, had nothing to do with that or involved in it. And so uh, I'm, I'm aware that they had difficulties, and the difficulties were they built it without uh, having funding in place from, from the health authority. They built it on a speculative basis, and thus they ran into problems. But uh, other than that, I, I don't have any intervening over that. Secondly, in terms of uh, the warehousing, I'm sorry, I take 
quite strong offense to that statement in terms of warehousing seniors. Uh, Baptist Housing is very proud of the fact that uh, in our sites where we've gone through accreditation process, we have the longest standing, which is a three-year accreditation award, and which indicates that you meet the highest standards in Canada in terms of uh, the care and the, the operational side of operating your sites. And so I find that very offensive, quite frankly, in terms of the suggestion that we would be warehousing. In terms of the sizes of sites, uh, we, I don't have the information uh, because it's not provided in advance to, to make any comparison or judgment in terms of the statement that was made. But I'm well aware that there are many campuses out there that are large in size and well over the 240. In terms of when I say campuses, it may not be all residential care. So if you look at only that component, I will give credit that that's probably an incorrect statement. But if you look at the rest of it in terms of assisted living or independent living or other seniors retirement living, on the same site, I know I have seen some examples where in essence it does accumulate and add up to more than that number. In terms of the staffing levels comment made, uh, staffing levels are dictated to us from Vancouver Island Health Authority, what those staffing levels are and what they must be. The flexibility that an operator has is in terms of uh, whether or not it's actually an RN that's on or whether it's an LPN, there are some discretions in terms of the numbers in terms of that, but in terms of the hours of care per resident per day, that is a mandated uh, a number from the health authority. So um, we, we pride ourselves in that uh, we would meet that standard for sure, because otherwise we'd be in violation of the regulations. In terms of the trying to answer the funding a little more, um, Again, this was an RFP process. An RFP process put the responsibility on us, not on the health authority, to find funders and lenders. That is not the role of the health authority. That was our role, as it would have been for the private RFPs that were submitted as well, for them to come up with the funding arrangements. Um, in terms of trying to answer the question of how many lenders did we approach, a bit, to me, a bit of a red herring in terms of, like, how many would be enough? Uh, in terms of lenders that you would approach. Uh, I know that we went to the extent of trying to find the best financing and lending agreements possible, and that's the one we worked with. And so I know we went to multiple lenders, uh, but most lenders, just to be clear, actually can't even entertain what we said in terms of the uniqueness of this deal. A chartered bank cannot actually provide the funding that we have. Chartered banks are by law not allowed to extend uh, credit beyond on, on a mortgage beyond 10 years. They could not even consider a 25 year with a fixed interest rate. It's not, it's not available. Um, they can't do it. We did, that was one of the ones we pursued. And we did pursue that with uh, Chartered Bank. And we also pursued funding through our relationships at BC Housing to see if that would help in terms of government funding, in terms of assistance. And that was not uh, possible either in terms of pursuing them because they rely upon the banks in terms of who they go to in terms of letting up the mortgages. Um, so I think we've exhausted all the lenders in terms of, uh, makes no sense in terms of whether they, you know, if, uh, if this falls through, where's, where's back to something gonna get funding for that, that next project if it goes someplace else? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know where I'm gonna get the funding. This was a unique deal. Um, what funding I might be able to get is a conventional mortgage that might be with a, a commercial, uh, a, a chartered bank and it may be only 10 years. Those are the differences. So what I, I say this funding goes away, it's literally talking about the deal that I've received currently, which we think is the best and most unique deal in terms of 25 years at a fixed interest rate today, uh, preserving that. Um, I believe I've answered all those questions um, Patrick, what was the other one question that you mentioned? Oh, the, the model? Just a point of clarification. Um, it, there's two kinds of models. One's called a massing model, where you're only trying to represent this, the relative scale of buildings. The other is a presentation model, where you go to the extent of colored finishes and materials. So this is a massing model. Um, I think uh, with respect to uh, the repeated question about uh, causing concern about the fire safety plan, I trust the 
Fire Department and the District of Oak Bay's review of the plans to date, and they're um, satisfied that they have uh, a firefighting provisions uh, met with the existing plan. Um, and then I too, with Mr. Rankin, would like to thank staff for their work with us. Um, we met with them before making an application. We met their submission requirements. We went, met with them after. Um, we have been uh, working with them over the last five months to supply the information that was required. Um, there was mention that uh, Council does not have the information to make the decision. I think if you note in the last two meetings there has been no submission of new information. What we're talking about tonight is trying to bring clarification and answers to questions. But all of that material from the original submission um, has been submitted and made available and been reviewed by staff. So I would say that uh, there, there actually is um, on the record all of the information that is required. Those are my two points. I just want to embellish one answer that Pat gave about the fire because I am, I have somewhat of a building construction background and understand in terms of fire regulation. So, but for the health of the audience, in terms of the regulations require you to have fire rated doors off of every residential street. They require the fire rating in all the ventilation system. That's all done by the engineers at the time of designing the building. In terms of the fire plan, the fire plan on each floor is divided into fire zones. There are, um, in the one plan we're doing, three to four fire zones per floor, which means that if, if there's an evacuation required, you move them to the next zone if there is fire in that zone. Fire in that zone is a very unlikely probability. It is modern in terms of the sprinklerization. It's modern in terms of using fabrics and products that are non-flammable, non-combustible. So all those things are met. So it, the, the probability of fire is greatly reduced because of the regulations that have come into effect. So there's a tremendous amount of detail. You, you don't evacuate. Whether it was a two-story building or a six-story building, they don't evacuate. They never get to that point where that fire is that intense in respect to having to deal with it. Usually they're coming after the fact because a situation has occurred and it's been contained. So there's different zones and methods of how you secure the residents. And that's all in our plans. And we have to have those in our plans even now in our existing sites that uh, operate uh, around the province. So it's not something new to us. We're very familiar with it. It's very detailed. question I believe around a 60 year contract and the nature of the penalty so um, and looking at Bob here the only 60 year contract it's actually a lease is is between uh, is there still 60 year on lease? Oh, okay. so we're all we're 25 years is the maximum term on all the contracts now so there isn't a 60 year contract there are land leases our operating agreement has penalties uh, up to including evicting essentially the operator and replacing them with a new operator. So there are financial penalties, there are missing operational requirement penalties that are basically fall onto the operator. And then in addition to which, the CRD can actually ensure that um, on OP Lodge and under this proposal which they would own, they can basically continue to cause healthcare to be delivered on that site. And that's part of the way the lease is structured. Okay. The other course question was this, I think a little bit of confusion about the source of the money and why we lose it. So I suppose the short answer is, and, and Howard and addressed this comprehensively, is we have a particular life code that has offered this rate, which is a very, very low spread. I, I, it's, a, it's a good rate of interest, 25 years, it's fixed. So we can, we can anticipate the operating cost with respect to the mortgage payment for the full 25 years. Um, which is to answer a related question, the asset, the building should be functional, uh, both uh, functionally obsolete, or functionally uh, available and technically available for 50 years uh, as a single patient long-term care facility. And we would hope to see it last as long as say 75 years. So I would say 50 to 75 years. Uh, so I think that answers that one. So this, the reason we're gonna lose this money if, if this goes uh, sideways is that this particular lender will walk because they needed to have placed this money under the terms and conditions. Um, that doesn't mean there isn't more money, and I think everyone's uh, pointed that out. What there won't be is this lender and this contractual structure, and as, as Bob Latton pointed out, this was based on Oak Bay Lodge being purchased by the regional hospital district in return for $40 million. So 
that contribution uh, would have to be renegotiated and may not be approved again by the regional hospital district, which means that the amount financed would go up and we would have to find a new lender. Every other lender that we've seen in the marketplace charges a higher rate of interest. So yes, you could find more money. It would cost more, so we would be able to basically, more healthcare dollars would go keep going into debt service in that arrangement. Nevertheless, under any circumstance, it would be via's intention to build a 320 bed facility in a location that could accept a 320 bed facility. Because 320 beds, which is uh, a facility organized into 20 bed neighborhoods, so very human scale arrangement for complex care and dementia patients, is a very economic size. And it's our job to get as many beds built for complex care patients as possible with the funding that we're given. So, 320 beds to be built, and, and the question really is, is where? Okay. okay. Um, I, was, I, I did say I was going to ask staff if they want to make any comments on mutual agreements with fire departments. Um, actually, there's a couple of things I was going to comment on. One was the, what, what's the question about whether has, has um, municipality done its own uh, parking study, traffic study, uh, environmental study, shadowing study? And the answer is no. And uh, that is the norm. It is the, it's that we expect the developer to hire uh, consultants to, to, to do this work. And that's not just the norm either. That's the norm in the municipality. That is the norm. Um, in terms of uh, the independence, uh, Developer hires uh, professionals who are expected to be independent. I mean, for example, Fund who did the traffic study, we use them ourselves. So um, we, we would expect that then that be obliged in terms of professionals that do this. Um, on the fire issue, um, I would re repeat what's already been said, and that is that um, uh, our fire department has gone over the fire plan. Um, I'm, I'm not an emergency uh, response professional myself, but I certainly have. Confidence in our fire chief and in our fire department, and I know that they uh, would be well prepared for, for any emergency that will arise. The other thing, there seems to be some concern about our resources and our staffing. I, I would comment that we have a professional fire department, we are well staffed, we are well equipped, um, uh, we're well able to deal with, with the vast majority of emergencies that arise. Obviously, if there's a large fire, as as is normal, we would rely on our, our partners, such as the City of Victoria and, and the District of Sandwich. We have mutual aid with agreements with them, and that's that's normal too. And they, they rely on us. If there's large fires in Sandwich, we, we, we go in and help them. So that's that's not unusual. But we are well staffed and, and we are well equipped, and, and, and I'm sure, like I said, that our fire department is going to be well prepared for any emergency that would arise. Okay. Sorry, sir, what's your name? Uh, Mark Brennan. Oh, sorry, and you were with Sorry, Mark Brennan. Brennan is the municipal administrator okay. in Oak Bay, and uh, he's uh, sitting next to him is Lorraine Hilton, who's the municipal clerk. Sitting next to her is uh, Karen. <coughs> Karen Green, who everyone has to go through at some point to get to me. <laughs> um, and sitting next to Karen is uh, Roy Thomason, who runs the uh, building and inspection and Roy, I was going to ask you, do you have any comments you want to make on any thing that's come up tonight? Uh, well, just a little bit further on the uh, parking study. Uh, we didn't do a parking study, however, we did a parking comparison with the uh, area, the region, the municipalities for specifically care facilities and what they require for their parking requirements. And it coincides with the Flint and Associated Traffic Study with basically one uh, parking space per three beds, and that is the same for uh, eight of the 13 municipalities. Some of those municipalities don't even have care facilities, that's why they don't have parking requirements for them. So we did a comparison to the region, not a full parking study. Okay, thanks very much. Any other comments from staff? Okay, so I just, just thank you. Okay. Any more comments from the applicant? Any more comments from the applicant? No? Okay. So it's over to the council. And who would like to lead off deliberations? <laughs> do you want do you want a two minute break? <laughs> nope? Okay, who wants to lead off? Do you want to start at the end? <laughs> Councillor Ning. <laughs> you were you were last in. Yeah. yeah. You were last in, that's why I picked on you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, as other people 
have said, I, I know this is a good project. I know it is. You know, we've been waiting for years for these 500 or so uh, beds. And so um, I, I fully support the project. I fully understand the need for these beds. And I also want to say that over the past couple months since we've been involved in this project with you gentlemen, um, I, I've, uh, I've been very impressed and I really appreciate your manner, your way, your integrity in working with us. Um, I, I think you've been diligent in your own right. You've uh, presented what we've asked and I've been impressed in that respect. But I am going to vote against this application for three reasons. Um, well, one of my reasons was because I'm concerned we haven't done enough of our own homework in Oak Bay here. I think we need an independent review. I think that we haven't completed the transportation uh, study. I have still questions that can't be fully answered in the existing transportation plan. There's uh, pieces of information that I'm not privy to that I find it difficult to make a complete um, uh, an informed decision around this project. But perhaps even more importantly is that this project actually while it's a good project, I just believe it's not in the right place. It's too big for this property. It, it goes against a number of principles in our OCP around preserving residential character of Oak Bay, maintaining our, our character of Oak Bay, preserving the quiet nature of the community, low profile image of buildings, etc. And there is a time and a place where we will override what the principles of that community plan are, if there's enough benefit to our community, in my view, anyways. But I, as others have uh, remarked already, I really, I can't understand the, the, the benefit. There's not enough benefit here for our community. I see in Mr. Waldner's uh, letter, uh, he says that there's clearly these positive benefits to the residents of Oak Bay. And I don't find them compelling. The reasons are around um, uh, spin-off construction. I, there's no guarantee that people in this community are going to benefit from those projects that, uh, um, that, that people would be employed there, but there's no guarantee that people who are employed there are going to be living in, in this community. We have no tax base here. That's a big concern. Uh, so I, I, uh, we, I think there's going to be increased congestion, increased uh, uh, demand on our infrastructure. I do appreciate there is a regional benefit, and we've said, I have said here on council that I'm open to contributing at a regional level. We'll participate. We do our our, our share. But at what cost? And for me here, the cost is, is too high. The final issue has to do with the lack of process. We've had a meeting here tonight and we've heard uh, from our community. And, uh, but, so somebody said to me, so had there been more process here, and, and even VHA says normally they do more, and Baptist Housing, as I've understood them to say, typically they will do much more process, but they've been uh, constricted with these these financial deadlines. So what would be different if we had had more time for due process? Well, I think that um, quite likely we could have looked at other options, which we haven't been able to explore. We've been ramrodded this 320 unit, six story building, and there, there's been very little room uh, for moving because the decision had already been made. So, uh, and I, I don't want to make a decision here. I, I don't think this is a good plan. I don't do it in my personal life or my professional life that I'm making a decision because I'm afraid of financing being pulled. I want to be able to make a decision because I'm confident that this is the right decision for our neighborhood, for our community, and for the residents who would uh, uh, 
uh, live in this um, in this uh, care unit. So, uh, for all those reasons, I'm not going to support this application. Uh, before I make my comments, I would just like to uh, say a couple of additional things to dispel the suggestion that was made earlier that I'm sitting up here and don't know what I'm doing, haven't paid any attention to this issue because that's a long way from the truth. I have, uh, I really didn't hear anything tonight that I haven't heard before, that I haven't read before. I have spent quite a bit of time with, for example, the fire chief, following the fire chief, the building inspector. I visited every property. I've been in and on the Oak Bay site, Oak Bay Lodge site, probably a hundred times. Uh, so I, I, I'm not really sure that there's a lot more information that I could possibly get that would assist me. The only question that further consultation is going to deal with is are you prepared to reduce the size of this building and eliminate 120 beds? And are you prepared to say, well, I'll forget the financing? And it's got to be beyond that. I see people who want to redesign the building, which isn't really what we're being asked to do. We're being asked for a height variance, and a parking variance, and a backup building. If it was a rezoning, we would get into redesigning the building, but it isn't that. We're also hearing people who not only want to redesign the building, they want to redesign the healthcare system. And that really isn't our business. So I'm going to just say a couple of things. A number of years ago, I chaired in Oak Bay a seniors housing committee and was convinced at that time of the shortage of beds in Oak Bay in a variety of levels for seniors. <clears throat> Following that time, there was a, a number of assisted living facilities built, Carlton House and, and the uh, places on B Street. It was clear, however, that there remains a shortage in, in care level, higher care levels for seniors. I can remember the mayor and I walking around Oak Bay with Howard Johnson many years ago looking for a place where we might be able to build some more extended care beds. Could we build them on top of the parking lot? Could we build it in the parking lot of the facility at the end of Elgin Street? Nothing worked. So I was pleased when I heard that Oak Bay Lodge was going to be redeveloped. When I first saw the uh, proposal and saw that it was 17.9 feet higher than the existing building, I realized the neighbors would be impacted and was pleased when the applicant decided to move the building back and away from Hampshire Road and to move it to the north to reduce the impact. This is not perfect, I'm not pretending it is, and I personally think it's too close to Camber Bay Road, but it certainly reduced the impact on Hampshire. We hear a lot about parking. Um, parking has been increased from 78 to 107, and as uh, Mr. Thomason pointed out, this is the same amount of parking as is provided in every other municipality for these kinds of facilities. And there is an independent parking study done. I have never yet seen a project where we didn't have the applicant hire and pay for the independent parking study because you hire a professional and you assume they will be independent. There's also in the community plan a provision that, that it is expected and, and assume that parking will be reduced for care facilities from the general limit in Oak Bay. There are also concerns about traffic on Hampshire. I go through that intersection a dozen times a week and the traffic is awful. It's terrible. Not coming from Oak Bay Lodge, but coming from the north. I sit there sometimes while 15 cars want to turn left in front of me. And the traffic on Hampshire is bad, I totally agree, and I would like to see if we could figure out something to do about it. But it's bad right now, nothing to do with Oak Bay Lawn. Some believe that the community plan limits building heights in Oak Bay to four stories. I read a petition that was sent around saying we were violating the community plan, and I don't believe that's true. Now the building is going to be 17.9 feet higher than it is now. 
I'm not a very tall guy, but that's about three times my height. So it's not that huge. I realize if you're looking at it, it's annoying, and some houses will see it more than others. But there's also a fair number of houses on Hampshire, particularly on the south end, where they have the big wall behind their house, that that wall is going to be gone. Some people are going to be better, a couple of people are going to be worse. <clears throat> the principal reason that the building is higher is that there are, they all now enjoy single rooms. The quantity of people there hasn't increased massively. It's gone up 40 people. So the, the, uh, the supplies coming in and out, and yes, the parking is not going to triple or double because the, the, the operation is not that much larger. I, like the rest of you, are concerned about the process and the type of time frame, and I've heard all the reasons. Is, there, is the rush real or are we being bullied into a decision? I don't know, but what these people tell me sounds reasonable. In normal economic times, I would be more skeptical. But I have to tell you, when I make the mistake of reading the paper and looking at TV as the world unfolds around us, <clears throat> I'm less sure that I should gamble on this issue. I agree with Mayor Costin's comments in the Times columnist the other day that this is the type of facility we've been trying to attract in the Rope Bay that the deal may fall through if we don't make a decision. That it would be nice if we could put it off for more study, but we're told that the financing deadlines make that not possible. I'm sorry that the people on Cranmore, who now look out on the green fields of Oak Bay High, are very soon going to have a great big building in front of them and they build a new high school. I'm also sorry that the residents of Hampshire and Boker will see a bit more building. And if you look at the pictures that we've all seen, some will see a bit, some will, be, some will see none. I'm sorry about that. Recently, I had to wander the streets talking to residents about being reelected. At every opportunity, I asked people their opinion on the proposal. The vast majority of people were totally in favor of this proposal. I had comments like, well, this is a no-brainer. Sure, you're going to go ahead with that. If there was more consultation, the basic questions will remain. The money issue, maybe it's there, maybe it's gone. Will DHAL be prepared to go ahead with this project if they were required to take off two floors? 120 rooms, I believe that's two floors. And that would make it smaller than it is now. I suspect if I was on the DHAL board, I would vote no to such a change. Am I prepared to risk losing this facility to Oak Bay? I've learned over the years, I've been on council, that I need to represent what is best for the entire community. When I was first elected, I thought I could keep everybody happy. I think that lasted about 10 minutes. And so when I consider the large community benefit this will bring, I'm not prepared to take the risk of losing it, and therefore I will support it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I won't support this. Uh, let me start by saying what this is not about this, uh, this evening and uh, narrow it down to what the questions are before us. Um, that there is a need for a facility like this, uh, I think that's a given. So it's not about whether we need the facility. We do need more beds. Uh, it's not about whether or not uh, Baptist Housing is a suitable operator and builder. They uh, clearly are. And it's not whether or not the neighbors uh, are against the facility, because clearly they've heard, uh, uh, we've heard here time and time again, they want the facility uh, in that area. So it's not about that. It's about two things, in my view. Uh, it's about whether or not this process uh, to date has been appropriate, and whether or not we can truly say that we are, have done our due diligence and we are in an appropriate position to uh, make a decision tonight. The second uh, issue that's before us is, is this building appropriate for this site in this neighborhood? Um, and um, I, in terms of the 
first question is, what about the process? I mean, what, we just went through an election where I think everybody who ran in the election had on their brochures or on their websites that they believed in open and transparent process. This has not been an open and transparent process. Uh, I heard Ms. Frenette suggested that VHA, uh, by what they did early on, dropped the ball. And certainly they, to me, look like the ones that should have come to us at some point and said, we are considering this amount of building on this lot. Uh, it wasn't by the sounds of it for Baptist Housing to do that because they were part of a, uh, a kind of, I don't know call it, well, I guess I suppose it's a secret uh, process where uh, the public is not involved. Well, surely we learned something, or we should have learned something for the HST fiasco, that the public will not put up with that kind of secrecy, that they want open and transparent government for real. Not at the last minute, not coming in in September and saying, all right, we've designed the project, here it is, do you like it? That's way too late in the game. We didn't have any input. When I was going around talking to people, I came across a, a person at the doorstep who said, well, so what? What would have been different had they come to you early? And I think there could have been a lot of difference. Uh, I think we, we could have had a true discussions at the municipal level about what's contained in our official community plan, which you've already heard, but more importantly, there's another aspect of the official community plan that talks about senior facilities and says that we as a council, we as a community, when we're looking at senior facilities, ought to consider municipal property and offering it to the appropriate agencies in order to encourage senior facilities. We didn't even have a chance to do that. We weren't even asked about that. We do have the, uh, the parking lot at, uh, right across from B Street that could have been built on, uh, either in part or in whole. We didn't have that chance, that interaction, because of the if I call it the kind of the uh, confidential or hidden nature of this process. The process has been neither open nor transparent and certainly has not been fair. There was a woman in the white uh, talked about, about the information we're getting for the first time. We've got lots of information for the first time. There's another a shading study we learned. It hasn't been disclosed to the community. We're told that there's not much difference, but that should have been out there. The model was given to us last week. Well, let's assume that you're a, a typical Oak Bay resident in North, North Oak Bay, and you have a family, and you have a job. When are you gonna see this? When are you gonna have a chance to think about this model? You're just not in seven days. Why wasn't it in, uh, in, on a website? Why wasn't it uh, in an information bulletin? What Baptist Housing decided to do was put a letter in the Oak Bay News. I think it would have been better had they did a picture of the model and showed all of the other photographs. So the, the people who are out there who have busy lives can be engaged and can be asked about it. Is this what you want for your community? So I, I don't think the process has been fair. There's been an information deficit, uh, I, think I would call it. And there's just too many unanswered questions for us to make an, an appropriate decision. This is a decision that should more appropriately be decided by the, uh, the new council. So what about the second question? And that is, is the building appropriate? I, I've heard uh, Councillor Herbert say, well, it's only 17.9 feet. That's not, that's, that's not the variance. The variance is 43 feet. Now, my understanding has always been that 10 feet is about the equivalent of one story. Uh, that's the equivalent of four story variance that's being asked for here. Uh, so uh, I just, uh, I think it's, if I were to be asked, I think it's, too, and I guess I am. Um, this, is, this building is too big for that site. Uh, but primarily I would, I would say that uh, we shouldn't be deciding this too. There's too much information that's come out at the last minute. When you look at this kind of process, all of this kind of information typically comes out uh, at the Committee of the Whole. So when we come to a final decision, everybody has the information, 
everybody's on the same page. I mean, it, but that's not happening here tonight. A basic question, I was listening to a, a, an insightful question that the mayor asked, at quarter to 11 tonight about what would happen if A, B, and C. That was at quarter to 11 that crucial information came out. It's, it's just not been right. So I will not support this. Well, I'm, I'm mad. I'm mad at Viha. I'm mad at the process. Um, we're just put in such a position um, where it's just a, a, a tough decision. And it's a decision between really two goods. On the one hand, you have, you know, um, the, the improved public trust in, in local government by rejecting something that's come forward, that, you know, that the process that has, has um, just been put, to, put before us. And it's bothersome to think that um, that process hasn't been open as what we would have liked. On the other hand, we have our seniors and the care of our seniors within our community. That's important to me. I'm going to be a senior, not as soon as any of these people, but I will be a senior soon. Sorry. I was just seeing if anybody was awake. Um, and so, so there's a lot of pressure on us for that because I, I want to respect the seniors in my community. I do. I want to respect those people that have helped us build Oak Bay to be what it is that have fought in wars for us, and all of those things, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our mothers, our fathers, whatever. I, I want to be able to respect them and have them have the opportunity to have a place in Oak Bay. Yes, it's not guaranteed. If, if we don't build this building in Oak Bay, the, the guarantee is there, they're never gonna be in Oak Bay. But if we do build the building, there's no guarantee that they will be, but there's the chance that they could be. So that's very important to me. And I, so it's a dilemma. It's just a true dilemma. And it's something that I think, you know, if I was sitting around this table moving forward, it would be much easier for me to make this decision. I'm not gonna be sitting around this table moving forward, so it becomes very difficult for me because I don't know if it's right of me to put something on a new council coming in. And I, I don't know if that's a good thing. So I struggle. I s struggle, I don't sleep, and I think about this. And I, I honestly wanted to come here tonight and hear everybody's opinion to see if I could maybe in my heart find something that I could go, yes, I could move ahead with this, or, or no, I definitely can't do this. But you know, I, I still struggle. I struggle because in the end, my decision will be placed on another council. And I think that what I need to do is I need to let that other council make the decision. I need to allow them to do the due diligence. However, what I will say is that I will say they need to keep these beds in Oak Bay. They need to make sure that Oak Bay does their part for the region. We are part of a greater region and we need to pull our weight in this region. So they need to do that. And they need to make sure that consultation is there. Don't give up those 320 beds. That's what I will say to them to the next council. Make it work. Make it work for our community and for our region. And so, with that in mind, because I won't be sitting around the table going forward, it pains me to not be able to support this project. And I appreciate everything that you gentlemen have done. I truly, truly do. But I honestly can't in good conscience make the decision that is going to be put on another council. And I apologize for that. But I say it's the best thing for our community. So thank you.
I guess there's one more speaker to go. I'm sorry. If you just want to just wait. I, I, I've got some things I just want to say. Uh, and first of all, I just wanted to uh, thank members of council. They've obviously struggled with this issue. It's a very big issue at a very bad time. Um, the timing has not been great for this, and I fully understand everyone has expressed their opinion and expressed it from the heart. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about background before I let you know what I think about this project. I, uh, I was actually in this room 24 years ago when my first experience with dealing with a room twice as many people as in this room every single person who spoke against the project. And I decided that there was a community good. 24 years ago, I decided there was a community good, in spite of the fact that everyone who spoke was against the project. That project turned out to be the Curry Road pump station. And now it's looked at as an example of how to do a pump station in the middle of a residential community. And people come from all over North America to Oak Bay to look at that facility and how it's done. And in answer to Mr. Chestnut's question, what happens to, what happens to residential property next to institutional property? That question was raised 24 years ago. And the CRD, who was the applicant, unlike Viha tonight and the Baptist Housing, C CRD said, we'll buy the next door house. So they bought the next door house. The pump station was built, and two and a half years after that, the price of the property had doubled. When people objected to Carlton House on Chaucer Street, we had exactly the same, exactly the same concerns that the houses would go down in value. So I monitored them all. And many of you know I monitor stuff like that. I monitored them all, and all of them that sold in the next, I'd say, five years after, after Carlton House went in, four years, all of them went up dramatically, quite dramatically. If you look at Shannon Oaks, Shannon Oaks fronts on Goldsmith Street. We had a huge number of people who came forward against Shannon Oaks. And we redid the building. In fact, we put it two stories higher because there was a community benefit to it. The people opposite were furious. They sold their properties out, out front of Shannon Oaks. And again, their properties had gone up in value because of the fact that this building next door to them was an excellent building. Those are, that's public record that you can look at as to what happens. Because once it's done, actually the building next to you causes values to go up. The other thing I wanted to just tell you about background, there hasn't been, in my 24 years, there hasn't been a single incident, there hasn't been a single improvement in this municipality that I haven't had to fight for. And, and you, may, you may smile and you may laugh that all the neighbors turned out and complained about Esteban fish and chips, that the neighbors com complained about crumbspeeds, about uh, demitas, about delish, about Carlton House, about Shannon Oaks. They complained when we put the lights in up at Henderson so more kids could play soccer, and Councilor Jensen, remember that. When we changed from the indoor curling rink to an indoor sports field that has completely transformed the Oak Bay Rec Center. Everyone fought against it. I had one of the most brutal meetings trying to convince people we needed to go from curling to indoor sports. Every single thing in this community has met resistance. And the only way, the pub, classic example, okay, and now I can't find anyone who objects to it. But 52% of the people in a poll said, we didn't need a pub, okay? So every time an incident comes up, we as a community try to, to, to knock it down. And there's always good reasons. Because the, the argument that you're making, those of you who are against it, 
you're arguing from your own perspective right next to it. And I totally understand that. But my job as mayor, and Niels' job as the future mayor, is always to look at the big picture. You've got to look at the big picture. You've got to look and see whether something is in the best interest of your community. That means you've got to make tough decisions. That means you're not going to be always popular. But as long as you do what is right and what you believe is correct for your community, you can sleep at night and you can, you can exist with you know, the kind of heart that I think all of us want to have. This is a difficult decision and an extremely difficult decision for a new council. There is no way that I could possibly put off this decision to a new council. That would be totally unfair. You've got five people sitting at this table right now. The minimum experience they have on council is six years. Okay, six, 10, 15, six, 24. To, to ask another council, three, sorry, Jack. You will have six, right? It's, 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 it's almost impossible to ask another council to do the work that we have done. And the question was asked, do I have enough info? Have I done my due diligence? Absolutely. Absolutely I have. I dealt with a, a variance some years ago on the university property in the uh, computer science building and the medical building up there. The variance wasn't a foot. The variance wasn't even 10 feet. The variance was 100 feet. Okay? And those buildings, you drive past them today, and the landscaping around it fits in. Look at Shannon Oaks. Look at the variance we gave on Shannon Oaks, so that there would be a greater good of people living in this community who had some subsidized living. Those were things that are worth doing. And they, they, you, you do them, and it's not always easy to do them. So, can I support putting this off to a new council? Absolutely. Because my record is that I always look at a problem, and if it's a problem that needs more, more consultation, then I generally put it off and get some more input. But in this situation, you've got two things going against that. One, you've got a new council who, with due respect, will take at least six months to get up to speed on even how a meeting works. That's, that happens. But the other thing is, I don't want to take the risk of this community. I can't take the risk of this community that this facility is going to go somewhere else. And to someone who says, this is not okay, this is, this is a regional issue, we have so few things that we get involved in as a region. Oak Bay Rec Center, taxpayers 18,000. Do you know what our client Bases. Our client base for the Oak Bay Rec Center is 100,000 people. If we didn't have 100,000 people as our client base in the Oak Bay Rec Center, and I see it's a commissioner for the Oak Bay Rec Commission sitting at the back, so that's my victim, you would actually have such a massive fall off in revenue that all your taxes would have to go up dramatically because Oak Bay Rec is one third of the budget. There's a lot of things going into this decision. But the biggest thing, and I'm going to wrap on this, the biggest thing is the fact that you've got a new council based on what I'm hearing tonight. Who are going to have to make that decision? But there may not be a decision to be made. And if a decision is made, and I can't influence that, I haven't got time to influence it, but if the decision is made to take this out of Oak Bay and put it somewhere else, I think we've lost big time in this community. So I am going to support the application for a variance. Thanks very much.